What happens when you spike an icosphere and then smooth it with the SubD tools in Grasshopper? Instant massage ball. Today we create something completely useless but therapeutic to look at. A spiky SubD blob, weird, organic and extremely satisfying. We will only use Grasshopper, no scripting, no plugins, except for some Weaverbird magic. Well, Weaverbird is a plugin, but you should install it anyway. This is the perfect intro to the power of SubD modeling in Grasshopper, just to get our feet wet. All right, we are here in Rhino 8. You might get away with Rhino 7 for this tutorial, or even Rhino 6, probably. I'm not sure, but let's head over to Grasshopper. For this tutorial, we will only use this one SubD tool, the SubD from Mesh. Yeah, we just use one tool, but it's a quite powerful tool. Now you will see why. We also need another tool here for this tutorial at least. It's called Weaverbird. Weaverbird is an amazing tool which can organize your mesh topology and it has a few other magic tricks. I love it and uh, you should too. If you, But if you don't have it, don't fear, you can use any mesh. If you just want to test the SubD tool, you can use any mesh or even any surface turned into a mesh. Now, what do we need first? We need a nice symmetrical shape. Weaverbird has this uh, def definitions. For example, the an, icos, an icosphere. We will use that icosphere. Now we it looks a bit sad. I have to say, we can give it either what we could do in order to see this a bit better is to basically just analyze analyze the the output mesh and to give us some edges here. That's possible. Or we could we could use we could use a custom preview. That's probably even better. So we can actually get this. Boom. <laughs> uh, that's quite quite satisfying, no? Super satisfying. Just see that. And we can even define here material even better. And we could um, also choose a color for this. Color picker. Let's use this one. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty cool already. Probably doesn't don't need to change that actually. But um, a green massage ball also cool. Let's stick with this. All right. So that is already very promising. Let's keep all the material here. So we only use basically one tool and a bit of a visualization trick. Now, okay. We open Weaverbird again, and this time we use a sub D function, the Weaverbird's Catmull Clark subdivision. Basically, we try to subdivide this mesh. Now here you can choose the levels. When there's level one, of course, then there's not much going on. Um, now we need to shift, of course, this here so you can see what's happening. Yes. So it was it was basically subdivided once. And we can hide this. Oh, not not reverse. We gotta hide it. All right. Now if we still want to see our edges, we can do that. Of course, you can put this in here. Let's see a bit better how that looks like. All right. That gives us a bit of an idea. Now, there's pretty cool tool here also. Again, Weaverbird is the Weaverbird Stellate accumulation. Interesting. So you can just plug this in here and it creates a pyramid on top of each of the faces. Boom. Pretty cool. All right. Now, again, we need to get our mesh preview. And um, of course, I'm gonna place this in here. And now it's already time to, okay, let's keep this first. And now it's already time to plug this in here, the mesh into the sub D tool. We, club, we plug the mesh into the sub D tool and you can see how amazing this softened the whole thing. Now let's get our geometry here. I'm not sure if this works, probably not, but we should hide this. And then we should also hide this one. That's very interesting. It didn't really understood that it's now a much softer version. It creates the, it still shows the mesh version of the sub D. Let's just get rid of it because we have here already our subdivision lines. That's pretty cool. 
but that's not all. We can actually change here a few things. So we can change here the distance, let's say 10. Um, and I go here also to minus 10. So we have a bit of a play and I put here a floor point numbers. All right, so we can this maybe make more spiky and we can also change the level of subdivision. You have to be a bit careful that you don't end up with, that's, that's very cute, super cute. And you can change this. It looks more like a cactus, a super symmetrical cactus. Now let's stay here. This was pretty cool also. Now this could, can go inwards as well. I mean, you could argue that there's not a lot of, it's not yet a lot of uh, sub, sub D <laughs> modeling going on, but alone this tool just is quite an impressive thing. Now we, we, let's try something even more crazy. Let's do this. Let's get this here and we plug this in again and see what that does. So now it should actually on each of these triangles, it should create another pyramid. Let's see how that works. Let's try to go here back, maybe one step. <laughs> you can create quite fun little objects and imagine you're gonna print it later. Especially, you know, I love massage balls. You could create very unique massage balls, of course. And what if we do this one more time? Let's see. Haven't really checked that. I love it. That's a cool massage ball. Okay. I think that's it. Very simple. A very fun little exercise to start. And yeah, next video we'll look at a bit more. Next, in the next video, we will look at a few more of these. Maybe I can show this one. So you can turn meshes, of course, into, we can turn sub these also back into meshes, which of course then could be quite uh, useful. So if I get hide this again, now we have a mesh and we could now, if we, sh if we would show now the mesh edges, you can see there's of course way more edge mesh edges here then we can see with the sub d tools so that's that what that's what uh sub d is doing in the background we actually don't see that when we work with it but yeah it's pretty cool and of course what we can do we can bake it and we have our tool here not happy with this the cool thing is it's baked as a sub d tool so we could now of course use our sub d tools from here and you know refine whatever we want to do with it but yeah try to try to recreate that with regular uh, grasshopper tools it's gonna be tricky